Ryan, what are you doing? Cleaning up. Uh, I should hope so. I'm not done yet, though. Oh, okay, great. He's got kind of clean as you go sometimes. Oh, okay, cool. Well, it's nice to see you, as always. Oh, nice to see and, you. And uh, I know we are waiting for some people to join us. Welcome to those of you who have already tuned in. But this is our, uh, yes, we've said this before, this is our Handy Pro series, and it's our happy hour time. So this is for grown-ups. Um, so go ahead and pour that glass of wine or your cocktail of choice or a, a cold beer. It's a little humid outside. I think a cold beer would make nice to put on cold today. Beer, a lime in it. There you go. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, if you have limes, you know, if you're happy to be privy to that. Um, before we get started on today's really exciting um, adventure, I would call it if I could, of building a DIY plow box jump, um, which can be used in a lot of different ways, and we're going to demonstrate that later on in the hour. Um, we are going to just quickly mention that our uh, Handy Pro is sponsored by Bro Vineyards. So if you've pre-registered, uh, thank you so much. You have been sent a list of uh, materials and directions for how to build the plyo box jump. Um, but you're also registered to receive the gift from Bro Vineyards, which is a uh, pair of red and white wines with some tumblers. So um, those also can be shipped to you um, and or you can pick up curbside. Do we that get those too? No, unfortunately, no. Um, but we will um, make sure that uh, all that information uh, is sent to you after the fact. So, but definitely stay on and comment when asked, and we'll make sure to pull your name, hopefully, and you can register. So, I'm going to give it a few more minutes just to, until we're here again. If you haven't been uh, tuning in, also every don't forget that on the first and third Tuesdays of each month is our Handy Kid Workshop series, and next week we'll be back at four o'clock on next Tuesday. And, uh, and it's escaping my mind exactly, but it'll be a fun surprise uh, what we'll be making. It'll be a fun surprise. I'm kidding. We're making a, a tray table of some sorts, like for treating your mom to breakfast in bed. Nice. So you can have that, have your kids make that for next year's Mother's Day or your or your or anyone's birthday, anyone's special birthday coming up. Maybe yeah, Father's Day. Breakfast Everyone breakfast does bed. breakfast in bed. I've never had it before. Really? Nope, oh well, you need to get on that. So yes, and then uh, again, and then two weeks from today will be our uh, next Handy Pro for adults, um, and we will be building a uh, pet feeding and watering station, which will be really fun and exciting. So lots and lots to look forward to. Uh, while we're all still here at home safely, we want to bring these fun workshops to you and help you encourage you to get out with your family, build things, enjoy yourselves, and then you know add a little dimension of fun to your, uh, to your home in your ways that you can do by yourself. So I think we'll go ahead and get started as always. And I'm Jen, I'm just your hostess as always, and Ryan is our expert. So um, he is going to take us through the steps to build a plyo jump box, but he's also going to touch on a bunch of safety features of the tools that we're using. This thing, for example, is quite scary. If you could get that out of my way, I don't have my hair up, and I don't, I, you know, the safety first. If I were actually building this, I'd have my hair up, and I'd be, uh, you know, but I'm not the expert. Ryan is. He's going to show us and take us through the steps and the tools that are needed, um, including the, uh, the, actually, I don't even know, it's the saw and all this, but there's different well, ways a, of being it's safe a, with it's it. It's a skill so. saw, but yeah. that's a brand name. It's also called a circular saw, which okay. is the appropriate name. Okay. But it's Fantastic. funny how we always call it. Like you get a box of Kleenex. Yeah. But that's just the brand, right? Oh, so this is tissues. This is a skill saw, but <laughs> okay. Really so what 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 is involved with making? What are the materials that we need to make this? So this project is okay. pretty simple. Okay. And it's a piece of three-quarter plywood. Okay. And I think the biggest thing about the three-quarter plywood is that uh, you can't fit it in every vehicle. That's oh, okay. Made, you know, so you don't have a pickup truck or whatever. I think you can get it cut at the store, pre-cut. Okay. And. Um, that, and potentially you could you could buy it in two by four panels, two, okay. two foot by four foot, because a piece of plywood always comes in four by eight. Or okay. Typically comes in four. I knew that. Four by eight. Did not know that. Remember that, right? Remember there. that four by eight. So yeah. this is a simpler yeah. project. Okay. So we're really just dealing with a drill, a tape measure, okay. a skill saw, okay. and, and a square if you need it. Yep. And um, yeah, and so mainly I want to kind of talk a little bit about this yep. tool. Really, this is what I'm want to kind of communicate because it's sure. a pretty dangerous tool. It, it does look and, pretty uh, dangerous. Yeah. I just want to say for the record, it's not plugged in right now. Oh, good. I was actually stepping so, away a little farther away from Ryan than normal because I was worried. That was and, that, and that would be probably the first thing to always say, right? If yeah. you're going to work on a tool and kind of okay. be familiar with it, definitely unplug it, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> good point. No, this is a this is the most common tool a carpenter is going to use. Okay. You know, this is the replacement of the old handsaw. Oh, okay. Right? And so, um, so it's a it's called it's a seven and a quarter blade, which is is standard, um, okay. which means it cuts about two and a half inches okay. of depth. But we adjust the depth as we need to, right? Because that's the first safety kind of thing we want to talk about. Okay, is that it, is knowing the, the fence and what the fence can do to kind of set up. Cause okay, because I don't want to cut everything through with the blade all hanging out crazy right. like that, you know? Cause right. Because on a piece of three quarter plywood, the blade hangs down quite a bit. Okay. So I want to use my adjustment on this Milwaukee tool, right. the adjustments in the back corner. Sometimes they're on the inside like that. You're going to have to get familiar with the tool. And okay. if you haven't spent time with the skill saw. I have not. Watch this thing. We're going to oh, start getting fantastic. comfortable with it. All right. you know, because it is, it can be dangerous. Okay. But it's yeah. also very useful. 
Yeah. And it can do what we need to do very quickly. Much more efficient, obviously, than a than hand, hand saw. saw. Yeah, because, <laughs> you know, it's 2020. Well. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is set my depth on my plane. Okay. And take my tape measure. I've got it unplugged. And I'm going to kind of take my tape measure here and just measure. And I want to be about a quarter inch deeper than the material I'm cutting. I was going to say, how did you know so how much to, to, to do? Because I've been sitting here fussing around for about an hour. Oh, Actually, well I was cleaning for an hour. No, and even cleaning. But um, no, so piece okay. of three quarter plywood. I want to okay. set it about a quarter inch deeper. And this doesn't have to be exact. You know, just okay. kind of get your gauge about where you want. It's about an inch, inch and an eighth. You know? Okay. If I was cutting a two by four, which is an inch and a half deep, right. you know, we set it to about an inch and three quarters, okay. two inches. All right? So a quarter inch. Yeah. Is it more than the. Is it good? Is good. Yeah. Rule of thumb. The problem is, if it gets much tighter right. than that, you're not going to cut all the way through and you're cutting twice. You know? Okay. So Isn't it measure twice, cut once? Yeah, I guess so. That's what we've learned. Or buy more materials. And pre drilling. That, I've learned a few rule. things over the past few weeks, Ryan. I've learned a few things. And so I've already okay. cut the pieces, so I'm okay. only going to cut the last couple pieces Great. here for you today. Okay. But so we, so we talked about the safe. So a tool like this, yeah. I'm not just going to like go around and kind of carve <laughs> with it, you know, which you can do, like a right. chainsaw or whatever, you know. But you got to know what its purpose is. Okay. And so it's gonna it's gonna cut a straight line. It's not gonna cut a curved line. Okay. And so in the manner that we want to cut the line is what we gotta make decision. I'll do a, a simple, quick demonstration. Okay. I guess that's a good thing to say is there's there's cross cuts and rips. Okay. So anytime you're cutting the shorter part of the material, okay, that's called a cross cut. Okay. Anytime you're cutting the longer cut, it's a rip. Okay. okay? And so rip and cross. Rip and cross. All cut. right. So I'm just gonna draw a 90 degree little mark on this piece of. Um, I'm gonna back up a little bit. Going on okay. Here. <laughs> Get off so camera. <laughs> just to do a simple cross cut. Now, I, I'll hold it like this. It's no big deal. But at home, you know, you want to find a block. And set it on a little block. Because everything's about supporting the wood while you cut. Is this how we're supporting the falling piece? I know you'd want it to cover uh, this it, or no? This is a small example. Of oh, okay. It, but okay. Um, so essentially, my, my board's right here. It's nice and solid. Okay. And I'm kind of holding it down with my left hand. I want to keep my left hand not in front of this blade and mainly I don't want to get the, the left hand anywhere underneath where the saw is really. okay of course it's not easy when you're fumbling around with stuff sure to let your hand get too close that but would be too dicey far, if I'm too far away right the board's moving okay and that and the danger in that right is that I lose control because this because the bigger saw you got the more power it's got okay and it wants to jump away if you don't if you don't have the board solid right okay so we're doing a very simple cross cut okay and so I'm gonna hold the board and I'm gonna press down Now I just eyeballed that cut because I've done that a few times. Another thing you do on a simple cross cut is take your speed square and you can hold it there as a gauge. Cool. So that's two ways to make a simple cross cut. So okay. that was just a demonstration. That has nothing to do with a box other than learning the tool, you know? That's, you know, well, practice makes perfect, right? If you have a few extra pieces of wood lying around, why not? Right. right? Or if you have a project. Or a project, sure. So I've already laid out okay. this cut that I want to make, this long cut on this okay. piece of plywood, which is essentially a rip. And what I'm going to do for demonstration. I, I really thought you were just going to test me on that, and I was going to have to be like, rip, cross, which one is it? I remember. Rip. Okay, rip. so it's a rip. It's a dangerous one when you're working with power tools. Okay, uh-oh. <laughs> so, so you're going to, you have to, okay, go ahead. What I'm doing yeah. now is I'm setting up a false fence. Okay. So depending on the project you're working on, you can rip it by hand. But most likely you're wow. going to vary however good you are. You're going to vary an eighth on the line or you're going to vary more. Right? Okay. And so if we really need this line to be nice and sharp without using a table saw, we're going to set up what's called a false fence. Okay. And you can use clamps. You can clamp it down on either end. Today I'm just going to screw it in because it's just as fast and easy. Okay. So the important part about this is that I needed to measure the depth of my fence here. Now, for demonstration yep. purposes, I'll unplug it. doesn't mean we always unplug it every day. <laughs> But what I'm measuring is the inside of the blade okay. to the outside of the fence. Because I'm going to let this side of the fence run across, or this side of this fence run across this temperate fence. Okay. It's five and an eighth of an inch. Everyone's okay. little, usually about five, five and a, sometimes it's five and a quarter. Okay. And so I'll come over here. I'm going to measure off my line. All right. Five and an eighth. I'm going to take my drill and my screw. Okay. Okay. That's the you one side. Okay. Come down here and do the same. Five and an eight. Remind the viewers again when you're done. Hold on. I'll, I'll save my question for after the noise. What's the question? Uh, what type of wood are we using? This is just 
This is a piece of, what is this? I guess this is AC plywood or BC plywood. Okay, so what is your that? Your plywood grades are rated on the level of finish you would need to put on them. Okay. So if you were buying, like, so this box right here can have a middle level of right. quality. Right, right. Um, because you're not, you're not trying to paint it, you're not trying to, like, you okay. know, yeah. give your grandma a birthday present, you know? Well, you could. Yeah, you totally if grandma could. can do box jumps, then. Well, grandma should be doing grandma box jumps. That's amazing. But, um, I mean. So, yeah, so yeah. The, the point that this doesn't need to okay. be, the nicer pie was just more expensive. Okay. Right, so like anything else. Makes sense. The better it gets, the sure. more expensive. So, okay. so a piece of four by eight plywood out of birch, which is a standard cabinet material, mm -hmm. it's gonna be about 50 bucks. Okay. This was $38, oh. right? So, yes. so what I'm doing, Okay. so we've we set up our faucet mess, we've screwed it down the table, like I said, you could put a clamp on either side and that's just as fast and okay. just as good. And all I'm gonna do, so this is the most important part right here. Sometimes this is this guard right here and it kind of gets in the way. Okay. And that's the dangerous part, so typically, you want to just go ahead and let start your cut, and the guard's going to automatically um, move itself up. Okay. So you don't always have to hold the guard. Okay. But if you feel like you're trying to start your cut, and the guard's acting funny, you can put your hand over here and pull the guard up. Now, okay. I don't know, actually, if that's a safe thing to do or not. However, I... it's what we do all the time. Okay. The job site. <laughs> so you can pull your guard up and start, okay. and start the blade. But if you're, not, so if you're not comfortable with the saw, keep your hand out of this space. You okay. Know? And since we've put a false fence here, I don't really have to hold anything with okay. my left hand. So right. in this, I'm going to kind of hold my saw. Okay. And, mo you know, saw's got a front handle. Sure. But since I'm used to it, I'm going to start my cut like that. Okay. And while, while I'm cutting, I'm putting my pressure kind of at a diagonal against the fence like this. Because if I'm just kind of letting the saw lead it, it might mm -hmm. go this way or that. I do want to kind of keep pressure against the fence. Same thing with the okay. table saw. So a little bit of an angle. Yeah. And if you see okay. that I stop my cut in the middle of my cut, the most important thing is I'm not going to start my cut right here. If you're experienced, I can start it and I know what it's going to do. But if you're inexperienced with your skill saw, <laughs> you definitely don't want to start a cut right in the middle. You want to go ahead and come all the way back to the beginning. Because that's a, per that's a perfect place to make a mistake and let the skill saw pop back on you. What's the saw is going to do? And the, what it's going to react in a bad way is it's okay. going to want to jump up like that. Okay. And that's where and that's where we get in trouble, you know, and not letting the tool kind of control us. Okay. Let us control the tool. Okay. And one more thing I want to say about using the tool, you don't want to force the cut. So when I say okay. put pressure against the fence, what I'm not I'm not like putting all the energy into okay. it. Okay. I'm not trying to make that 28 inch jump on the box. Okay. <laughs> I am just kind of keeping even light pressure on it. Okay. But more importantly, when I'm pushing, when I'm pushing the uh, skill saw through, mm -hmm. I'm letting the tool do the work. And that's the most important rule. Knowing what the tool needs to do the work correctly right. and letting it do the work. That's right. the best rule about any power tool. Okay. So I'm going to start my cut over again and finish it up. Now I'm comfortable I'm comfortable with this tool enough to kind of just naturally navigate around right. the board. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would not be. Nah. No. And, and the truth is, as you can see, I turned from a two-hand cut to a one-hand cut without okay. even thinking about it. Okay. You know, and so I just kind of kept on cutting through because I wanted right. to get the cut done. But it's important to know, like, setting your cut up is kind of the key to doing a good cut like okay. that. Okay. And so if you were going to cut, and you know, if I wasn't as comfortable, I might want to keep the saw kind of on this end of me and I'll cut this way. Okay. But that's an important thing that's next because where our piece is going to fall, is part of setting up the cut. You know? Okay. And so this piece, I let it fall down on my saw horses and it was fine. Oh. We're, we're gonna do a cross cut on this plywood. Okay. And I wanna talk about supporting the fall. Right? Okay, great. But oh, oh, that board's stuck. <laughs> How'd that board get stuck? You drilled it in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so much for rip. Bad deal. Oh. We got a time situation? No, we're fine. Huh? Nope, we're good. All right, cool. Cool. So we pull off our false fence, and we're going to finish All up right. these cuts. So this is a 28-inch cut. I'm pulling from my factory edge right and left. Okay. And we do when we when we take a measurement, we do what's called a little crow's foot. Is you take where the line's at, and you and you start your mark like that. You kind of do a little a little arrow pointing at it. I'm going to do both cuts on. Okay. This. All right. Then we take a straight edge and we make our mark. And I'm going to cut these freehand, not set up a template. It's another great way to learn how to use your level. Well, it's a nice straight edge, right? That's a 
really big one. This is a four foot level. I don't know. Most carpenters have a four foot and a two foot, and sometimes a torpedo level, or and they have a longer one that's like 78 inches or six foot, or they got these ones called plate levels. That that's go all pretty the impressive. Up. There's all kinds of tools out there. That's right. All right. So this is just a freehanded cross cut. <clears throat> And I'm okay. not gonna I'm not gonna fuss with the fence on this time. I'm just gonna cut it through because it's a square cut. It's gonna naturally work. All right. Now the important thing to know is I'm not the bad thing I'm illustrating right now is that I'm cutting in the middle of my saw horses. Okay. And so this is the only reason this isn't dangerous is because I've got proper support underneath. I've got okay. two by fours underneath my plywood. All right. So that's how on this application I'm supporting my cut. Okay. Right. If I just had the piece of plywood sitting on the saw horses, just had to. Conjure that up. Don't forget to be safe and wear your safety goggles. If I had the piece of plywood sitting on, on the saw horses, right. and I was cutting in the middle without support beneath it, yeah. that's the most common mistake anybody makes. Okay. And not being familiar with the tools. Okay, that bears repeating, so say, say it again. Yeah, this yeah. is the most important thing. Okay. So I'm illustrating a setup, Sure. and the most important about the setup is that I got these two by fours supporting my cut. Okay. And my depth of my cut isn't cutting all the way through the two by fours. Okay. Right? Yep. So if I'm cut, if if my weight of my material is in in the middle of the saw horses, okay. it's going to come down as I'm cutting, and it's going to just turn into a disaster. Okay. And if you've ever been out there when somebody does that, it's kind of scary. You know? I can so, only imagine. So that's why what we're talking that's about. Why I don't is, do that. Is planning your cut, yeah. supporting your cut, and so, okay. so like you see, I've got my depth correct, so I'm not going to cut through the two by four. Okay. I'm just going to do a quick rip. All right. Finishes up my cuts for our box. So, you you called that a rip, but if it's going this way, isn't it considered the Listen, other? It's a piece of plywood. Okay. So just so you know about <laughs> about plywood, um, it's uniform. Oh. But if I was ripping this two by four, it'd be different, right? So if I'm cross cutting that. a two by four, yeah. that's a cross cut. It's just terminology. It okay. Doesn't, doesn't hurt to throw it out there. Sometimes sure. they give too much information. No, no, no. But if we were ripping the two by four down to two and a quarter or whatever, that would be a rip. Okay. And we, cool. We're not demonstrating that today. Not today. So. No. Any other questions or notes that I put on there about <laughs> the um, uh, we, we talked about setting up the cut, the saw safety, reviewing that, supporting the falling piece, positioning to best uh, cut things safely, and establishing a temporary fence. Yep. So, and so. I'll, I'll just say one more little side note sure. real quick. Here's my pieces for our box. Oh, we might need to knock the dust bring off. that over so that the camera can pick it up. We're going to set it up right here. Oh, we are. So okay. this is a quick example about cutting through. Let's say I'm going to cross cut this two by four. Okay. This is exactly the wrong way to cut. If I'm gonna let the fall cut, I wanna cut over here on the right. Okay. Set my depth where I want it. And just let the board fall. And that's the best, that's the best expert advice you can get about using the skill saw circuit. Okay. So there you go. So cool. now we're gonna break our little station down real quick. So what Ryan did in advance of our live today, because it would have taken a little too long to cut every single piece. And I like um, hearing myself talk. <laughs> He went ahead and did a, uh, most of the cuts and put together m the box as much as possible. And he just wanted to demonstrate the last two cutting pieces. So I think um, for someone who is new to these tools, the whole entire process might take a few hours. I don't know. I no, mean, I mean, yeah. For you, some, obviously, it's much faster. He's a master carpenter. you do a woodworking project in your right. garage or whatever, just give yourself a half a day. Don't rush it. Right, right, right. Because if you're sitting there stressed out about getting it done, you're going to make a mistake. Cool. The only time we're stressed out is if we're trying to get your project done. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good stress we got. But yeah, we've talked about this before. Uh, patience is key, right? Yes, I mean, you've always. said that with everything that you do with carpentry related, anything you're building, be patient. Don't rush the process. Yep. There's um, never, there's being never careful. a reason for a homeowner to feel a sense of urgency with something they're working on. And if you are and you're not familiar with these tools, then you've got to put yourself in check and be careful. You know? Cool. So, All right. Since we didn't get into a whole bunch of talk about the dimensions of the box, we're just kind of talking about assembly and cutting today. The instructions okay. are, as noted, yep. sent to the people who are interested. Yes. And if you didn't pre-register, you can always comment below or uh, D, uh, PM us um, and or email us. And uh, the email address will be placed here. Um, and we will send you the instructions and materials list after the um, demonstration. So I'm just putting okay. a couple of screws in real quick just to kind of get it started. Did you uh, pre-drill? Not yet. No, I'm oh. going to talk about that right now. Pre-drilling is very important. This is what I learned from Ryan this spring with doing these what, workshops. What pre-drilling pre does okay. is it prevents the wood from blowing up, literally. Oh, we don't want wood to blow up. No. And so you no. kind of. So this is, this is a pre-drill bit right here that has. Okay. A, it's called a countersink on it, and what the countersink does is it gives you kind of a seat for the head of the screw to sit down in the wood. 
to import. You don't have to have it. You can just use a regular drill okay. bit, but I needed one anyway, so I had Mark oh. pay for it. Oh, Thanks, Mara. <laughs> you're welcome. And uh, <laughs> so anyways, so I'm going around, and I've got my pre-drill bit, and I'm going to put about four screws on each side. And so I'm using three-quarter inch plywood for a box like this that somebody's going to want to stand on. Half inch is definitely too small. You know, okay. Probably comes in quarter inch, half inch, and three quarters. Okay. This is a nice piece of three quarter. All right. And so I'm just going to go around. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put those in because okay. what else is happening right now is I'm squaring up my box. Oh, I thought that was a question for me. Oh, I was like, hey, well, Jim, I'm watching what, you. What else am I doing right what now? What else are you doing right now? I have no idea. No, I'm kidding. So I'm using, Not so kidding. when you build a box, whether it's a cabinet okay. or, or a jumping box like okay. we got here, oh, gosh. You, want, you use, because this is a perfect rectangle, mm -hmm. because I just cut it without a straight edge or nothing. Right. I, um, we use that last piece to what we call rack or square the box. Okay. Because at the end of the day, doing carpentry work, it's all just geometry, man. That's, so, yeah, I see that. And so I'm using this last piece. The reason I put these screws in mm -hmm. there before I finish, because I can feel okay. the bottom box was a little bit okay. what we call walker jaw. Did the, do the instructions tell you how many, do we t uh, recommend a number we, of screws? Or I did think you every four or five inches okay. is enough. All right, cool. Maybe six inches. All right. So I'm just going to finish this up real quick. And I mean, this is... I mean, I'm, I'm jokingly, well, I am going to be jumping on this in a little bit with um, a fitness instructor, a friend of mine, who graciously is um, coming to join us today. Um, I just want to make sure that it can hold me, because well, it's been a long quarantine, guys. It's been a the, long quarantine. And I'm a little about nervous about this. <laughs> I'm like, I will do tricep dips, hopefully. Well, I'll but. test it out for you, Jim. <laughs> Before we let you guys go, i got a test I've been thinking about. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, goodness. It's a good test, and if it works for this, it'll work for you. Okay. So we just zip these screws in real fast because it's that easy to do. Okay. And then we'll do the other side. And just as a note, when I put these when I put these screws in, I was, yeah. it was about a three eighths, which which I eyeballed because half a three quarter is three eighths, right? So you want your screw and if you yes. wanted to kind of measure the three eighths line <laughs> fractions? You would measure. Yeah, Ryan? Right. No one said there was going to be math involved. We always talk about math. I know. I'm just kidding. And the kids love it. The kids. This is the. But this is the adult. This is the handy pro. From the kids about more math, more math. Yes, that is true. We did. We have gotten so many messages. Thank I mean, you all so it's much. It's really the nicest thing to be part of a community, <laughs> and you give a little <laughs> workshop and you talk about math, and all the kids love it. They do. It just makes you feel good that America's going in the right direction. Amen. Because so it true. certainly is. <laughs> so. Um, Melissa and my friend Melissa will, and I will talk about this, um, about there are d three different ways and heights that you can use the box, and we will demonstrate those um, in a little bit, but um, this makes me a little nervous, but we might have to move it off to the side. Well, I'm going to test it. Oh, <laughs> Ryan's going to test it. Oh, you're it. nervous about jumping on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, yeah. you shouldn't be nervous about it. Right. You'll be good. Oh, thanks, man. Did you stretch? Yes. We, we told you to stretch. And I wore my fun leggings, so. Yeah, that you know. makes a difference, right? It does, yeah. You know, like when the Reeboks came out in <laughs> 1989 with the pumps? Man, it made everybody jump on it. <laughs> then the Jordans came out. I had a pair of those, actually. It, it made when I played high school basketball, I had a pair of Air Jordans. It was very exciting. I can still remember what the first pair looked like. They were white yeah. with a little red Michael Jordan. I think there's a Netflix Michael Jordan documentary out right now. The Last the Dance is on ESPN. Actually, it's been really good. My kids have been watching it. Yep. They just started bleeping out the words. Yeah. It's been a really good educational spree. <laughs> For anybody that was paying attention back in the day, he was yeah. a pretty good basketball No, player. yeah, yeah, no. So Amazing. So you see, it goes together pretty wow. quick. Wow, that is pretty quick. But I would, I would say as we, yeah. the biggest thing we were saying about slowing down okay. is really important, you know? Because yeah. I go quick because we're well, on you've the clock. Well, you know? you've been doing it. No, but you've been doing it. I mean, yeah. That's why you're the expert. Yeah. I still haven't got my certification yet. So. You're farther wait. along than I am. I'm waiting so. for it. You know? I didn't know who I was supposed to call for it. <laughs> so, that's it. So we wipe the dust off. Okay. And we're going to test this so that the ladies <laughs> don't have to feel uncomfortable. Oh, good. <laughs> Does that I work? Good. Yeah, Great. Let's, let's flip it to the other side. See okay, let's see if that too. works for you too. Yeah. Oh, I didn't take a sip on the last one. We have to oh, okay. It again. <laughs> oh. Better? It's good. It's a good height. Yeah? Yeah. 
We're good. Awesome. Well, thank you, Ryan. Everybody feels great, right? Every P feels great. All right, good. All right, I'm going to, we are actually going to shift our focus to the other side of our room. I'm going to introduce our special guests for today. Um, and uh, actually, if we could grab your mic, uh, Ryan, and then uh, I guess this is, you know, okay, here we go. Here we go. We're still live. We're still live, folks. All right. And our uh, videographer will tell me if I'm in a good spot or not. I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. I'm good. Okay. Oh, goodness. Am I on right here? Am I good? Okay. Hey, this is the other room uh, side of our Moss Design Center. Are you, are you on? Is your mic on? Cool. All right. So. I'm going to ask my friend Melissa to join me here. We're going to stay a comfortable distance apart. Um, <laughs> no, I'm getting a little closer. Um, I'd like to introduce my friend Melissa Aru, who is a certified business instructor and uh, runs a lot of different classes online on her Facebook page. We're going to put that page up there. And she's been offering them free twice a week. And they're killer workouts. Um, I've actually been working out with Melissa off and on for years. But we actually have known each other for 13 14, years? almost 14. 14 years. 14 years. <laughs> um, but she's a really big inspiration to me to continue working out and to just to be a really active and involved mom. So I love that she's here. So I just want to point out, definitely visit her Facebook page. She posts a lot of great workouts and links. And I'd also like to mention that um, if anyone's ever interested, when it reopens, uh, <laughs> Melissa's family owns the Escape Room Herndon, which is an awesome venue. So please, you know, support another small business That's in the right. area because <laughs> we're all about supporting small businesses. That's right. So, um, but Melissa agreed to come here today because she's awesome <laughs> and to help demonstrate some of these different options. And I have them. I think they're going to come up on the screen. We're going to talk about what we're doing. Now, I know this is the, there's That's different the levels. This That's is the right. highest. So we can, uh, we'll move it to the shorter one if yeah. we want. So I think we should, maybe we should start with the basic jump. Yeah. Okay. So we push it forward this way. What do you want to do? Are we gonna still, I just want to make sure we're still on the. Is this a good height or good. view? Okay, so now she's going to demonstrate and I'm going to follow up. Got it. All right, so what do you do? All right, so I'm going to do different levels too because I don't know who's all at home, right? Right, right, so right. So you want to be safe. Um, box jumps can be scary. They're scary for me. I don't like doing them super high even though I could jump higher. But um, I've had a lot of um, clients that hurt their shins on it, so make sure okay. you're careful first. So it's all about landing your squat. So feet are hip width apart. You want to come nice and close onto it and you will land on top. We come through in this heel, so we don't want to land here, you want to land in your squat. Option one, jump it bike right up, <laughs> right back up. <laughs> Option two, you guys can do that jump and then step it back. Option three, you guys are just stepping and stepping through. All right, all right, let's oh, see Oh gosh. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> remember, stretch. land your okay, squat, so land your squat. My, I'm, I'm coming a little closer. Okay, and then hip width apart. Yep, hip width Start apart. Start my squat. Start your squat and launch forward. Okay, you know I'm older than you. So we'll see how this goes. Oh. Nailed it. There you go. <laughs> and then you can That's jump actually back really, back. really hard. It is very hard. Oh my gosh. And then come back <laughs> down. I know back. you, so we yep. want to land soft as soft, soft as much as possible. You okay. sound like a ninja. That Nobody was really, I will tell you, and I was like, this be fine. I'm tall. <laughs> I work out. I'm going to be fine. No. That was scary yes. hard. <laughs> also, I didn't want to fall on live Facebook. So yes, that's the scariest <laughs> part. <laughs> um, so this is the height. Reminder: This is twenty. Is this twenty-four inches? No. That's twenty. This that's is 20. twenty. Oh my gosh. Okay. So yeah. how else? We also talked about doing. Um, here, I put this down. Split lunges. Yes. So okay. Split lunges. This is a. Should little, I go behind? Like you could. You could go behind. <laughs> so you want to put your right foot okay. on. All right. You want to be facing away from it, and shoulders are stacked over top of your hips. Oh. All too often, people are here, and this is terrible. You got to scoot yourself all the way out, and then you come straight down, okay. and then right back up. Okay. If you want to add anything extra to it, you can do a little <laughs> rotation as well, right there. And you could hold weights when you're doing you can that hold as well. Weights. You could do curls with it. You know, okay. lots of different things. Okay. So like. So right foot on. Okay. You want to be further out. Farther? Yep. Right there. Right there. Right there. <laughs> Shoulders back and okay. lunge straight down. There you go. Oh my gosh. And these are brutal. The Romanian lunges. Oh. <laughs> quad burn. Oh my gosh. That's where it's at. Oh, so do geez. those two combos and your legs will be crying. <laughs> I mean, how many box jumps if a person did a couple in a workout? Like that's that was. Yeah. So hard. I like to do cat downs <laughs> on my workouts. When I okay. do like box jumps, so I'll do like 10 box jumps and then 10 okay. lunges on each side. Then I'll do eight box jumps and then I do eight lunges okay. on each side. So I like to do a countdown on mine. Do you have a box jump? I at the gym, not at oh, home. Oh, because like, oh, okay. <laughs> not at home. <laughs> um, okay, we, I also suggested um, some sort of an incline push up. Yes. Okay. So this can be a little high for some people. Oh. So okay. if you're a little shorter, you might. Oh. Have a little bit harder time. But, but we could also move sure. the box, right? Yes. To a sh or this is the shortest level. I think this is the shortest level. This is the shortest level. You want to make okay. sure your feet are hip width apart, all right? This is harder. <laughs> this is easier, right? Just making sure you're looking toward your fingertips, never at your toes, and coming down here, all right? 
I guess you could also do it with your this direction. Yes, that's what I was going okay. to say. So option. I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm like. I don't want to come. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants me to go this way because I think that'd be a bit too uh, too much out there. Okay. Hold on, Melissa. Am I here? Yep. The show's on. Okay. Yep. And that's it. There you go. Oh gosh. <laughs> and I work out, people. Okay. So I love an incline push-up. They make it a little bit harder. It actually makes you concentrate on your form more than being on the ground. I think I just got sawdust. Because you don't get to look at your toes. Yeah. You have to look forward on. I was also thinking you could do that's what I was gonna suggest. Oh, okay. So if you're new to push-ups or if you're just right. working on them, totally. This is your best bet right here. Okay. Or if you're working your tricep push-up, which Ooh, is a yeah. lot harder. It is. You want elbows in. Yeah. And being up here is a lot easier to cool. work on that form. Oh, yeah, we're okay. getting so all dusty. I know, I know. <laughs> um, I had also suggested like a tricep dip. So try to do it, yeah. Okay, so, what are the hints way? for that? This way? Okay. Yeah, I think it's right. okay. So tuck your oh, fingertips into your bottom, all right? You walk it out and you keep it close. All too often people come way out far. You want to feel that bench almost graze your back, all right? And the key to this one is always roll your shoulders back. All right, okay. I always, t uh, what's the difference between, so I want my, this? So straight leg is easier, I mean it's harder. Okay, like straight this. Straight leg is easier. Oh, uh -oh I think yep. I just got my, you, it's uh -oh. oh, I think I lost my mic. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not meant to do tricep push-ups today. My triceps are super rock hard. I'm good. I'm good. Um, the other one, I mean, a basic step up, like you already demonstrated, yes. is just the. You could even do like, but you could do like kick. this, right? Oh, yes. Okay. So you can do okay. step ups with a kick, and you kick all the way Ooh. through. Oh, that's you a good idea. You can do a step up, knee up, and then take it yeah. down to a back lunge. Ooh. You can rock out on the side and come here and just yeah. drive and bounce that knee up. So, so oh, many fun like things. Like step to aerobics. Do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like step aerobics. Yes. <laughs> um, so, our last challenge before we uh, head out for the day, um, we are, uh, Melissa said perhaps to challenge me to a box jump to a burpee, <laughs> which, okay, I'll try it. Um, the, the burpee on the ground, like burpee with a push burpee up? on the ground. So, drop it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. What side's best view? Oh, I don't, I, can I go off camera? <laughs> I think we're okay. Is this because just from the back? Do you, from yeah. the back? Well, you from the back or from the side? You won't be able to see the burpee. Yeah. From the side. All right. <laughs> so All right. Gonna, so you're going to come here. Yep. You're going to land it. Yep. Come off, burpee, back throw. All right. That's not so bad. <sighs> Melissa loves burpees. For her I birthday workout, burpees. she made us do over 40 of them. Yes. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, actually, she has a class tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. And it's going to be all strength, right? All strength. All no strength. jumping tomorrow. No box jumps. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. You got this, girl. All right. Land it. Off. Hands down. Oh, shoot. I messed up. Burpee. Oh. There you go. That was great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd high five you, but we're not allowed yes, to touch. high five. There we go. All right. <laughs> if you haven't, if you're still watching us, which is awesome, Please remember to comment below and if you uh, to, that, to be registered to win the prize. We, we have a raffle prize, yes. Fun. From Bro Vineyards. One person will win a bottle of red and a bottle of white and some tumblers. I'm a little out of breath. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. And this is just from demonstration. This girl does killer workouts. Don't forget to go to her Facebook page, support her, and any other ventures you might have down the road. Please post about those. Also, remember her husband and her own Escape Room Herndon, which is an awesome facility. And actually, they've been posting. I'm literally out of breath. Um, puzzles <laughs> online. So um, these cool, free, fun puzzles that have been great. So thank you, Melissa, so much for coming thank and you. joining Thanks us today. Me. This is great. It was great to see you in person, yes. not just on Zoom, um, even though we're still far apart. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, take advantage of this time to build something to add to your home gym. The box jump was pretty easy to put together. I mean, it was Ryan. He makes everything look easy. But there's lots of different options. And actually, we could just sit around and have beer on it, too. You know, you never know. So. Thank you again for joining us today. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Melissa. And we'll see you later. <laughs>